so in this video series we are looking into the different perspective different aspects of this rest template that we have and we are creating instance of that so far we have seen basics of rest template builder and how we can set the base url into the rest template instance itself using rest template builder right in this video i am going to show you how we can set the timeout part in rest template so that if your third party service is not responding in a particular in a specific time it should come out of that should not wait infinitely from uh, the third party service right so let's go ahead and see that how we can do that this we have rest template be Builder. so let's stop the service and so everything here is now this is the main controller that we have you're calling the user send point right so in config we have set the root uri template handler that is taking care of the root uri right so next we are going to see how we can set the timeout part so this is direct this is quite easy and directly in the builder set timeout set read timeout we have and set connection timeout we have so we are going to see we are going to set read timeout right how we can do that it has two flavors that is there so let's go ahead and see that so one is taking set read timeout as duration and another one is set timeout that is taking int so it is deprecated as you can see this right deprecated and it is also saying for uh, which one you should use instead of this one so if you're calling this set read timeout by passing timeout it is going to create the duration instance from there so instead of calling this set read timeout i can call this one directly which is taking the timeout in duration form right so how we can do that so take the duration this has different utility methods of millis and how much i want to set how many milliseconds i want to set as a read timeout suppose i have decided that 1000 millisecond it should wait for that till 1000 millisecond and if it is not getting any response in this time period it should come out of that and throw an exception so let's go ahead and see this okay so the instance rest template that it is going to return now will have this timeout and this url hit right so let me go ahead and run this application. So in the meantime, let me show you the Spring Data demo that it has. So in users list, we are, we are hitting this user endpoint, right? So as of now, it is sleeping for 1000 millisecond, right? So it is not going to respond in thousand in less than 1000 millisecond, right? So our service is, our service is expecting the response from this service in this time period right so that is conflict right so it will not give any output in this case but will throw an exception right so just clear it out and clear it out also uh, that is client rest template builder demo and let's go ahead and hit the url that we have so i'm just going to refresh it and see how it behaves yeah it is going it is throwing an error right so this application has no mapping so it has no mapping for error that is why we are by default we are getting this so there was an unexpected error internal internal server error io error get request for this read timeout it is explicitly saying that read timeout exception was there right so if i go and see rest template builder i can say the see the detailed exception read timeout is there right so this is the stack trust for there if i go to the spring data demo it is still returning the it has still given the output properly in our console right so our client has hit the service okay and waited for 1000 millisecond but it has not responded in that time that is why client is expecting uh, client uh, didn't get the response in expected time so it threw an exception but there is nothing wrong with me, uh, my this service that is get, giving the response it responded but not in that time that our client was expecting right so that read timeout it plays important role in production that what you want at which particular moment of time right so this was about setting the timeout that we can use uh, which is very helpful and uh, in production cases so you saw how we can do that this is the config class that we have so we can use this so we have seen 
base URI, how we can set that and timeout we have seen how we can do that. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can add interceptors, customize it further for logging request and response that it is uh, hitting the particular URL of the third party service so that we do not need to put log.info or SOP in each method, right? So until then you play around with these ones. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye. Take care.